There are three tames in this game which have a stun mechanic associated with them. They are the Baryonyx, Perlovia, and the Microraptor. Out of all three of these, the Microraptor is by far the most overlooked, being a 30 second knockout tame requiring no narcotics at all levels without kibble on 1x rates. One would think that something this easy to tame cannot be useful. Well, the Microraptor can be thrown at any land or flying tame and cause the rider to be dismounted and stunned. It occupies the shoulder slot, which means that it's essentially an extra piece of gear. And you wouldn't go out to PvP without a shield or a helmet, so why do people go without a shoulder tame? I'm going to explain why this little screeching raptor is 110% worth your time and how to use it effectively. I'm gonna get straight into it, so if you look at a tame and you hold E on it, you'll get an option, right? And you see this in the bottom, modify ordering groups. Now a lot of people don't know what this does and a lot of people don't even don't even bother finding out what it does, but it's actually really important and we're gonna go into how to use this today. So when you open it up, you'll see three buttons. You'll see add creature to group, add class to group, and remove tame from all groups. The, the first thing we're gonna get into is the simplest of the two, which is add creature to group. Now you'll notice, if I do a whistle, such as the move here whistle, which is comma key, all of my teams will move. Okay, except for this one for some reason. Hello? Yeah, he, okay, he'll move too, I guess he was just too far. But they'll all move to this set location. Right. And this is because I have no tame group set for any tame. If I have no tame group set, it doesn't matter which class I set my whistle on. You'll see at the bottom, I'm cycling through all of my tame ordering groups. This is done by uh, pressing buttons on the num key. So you have zero, which sets it to tame group 10, one sets it to tame group one, etc. You go all the way through all the, all the different tame groups. Now, if you press the tame button twice, you'll see tame ordering group none. And when I do this, it highlights every tame because every tame here has no tame group set. So every single tame, regardless of the group, so see I'm set on tame group 2, if I whistle, all of them will go to it. If I'm set on tame group 10, all of them will, all of them will go. And if I'm set to tame group none, they'll all follow this whistle. So that's how that works. But let's say you want your tames to follow separate whistles. If I, here's a good example, you're, you're throwing your Arthropleura into a base and you want it to attack the wall, but you don't want your other teams to run into the base and get shot by the turrets. This is how you would do that. So you go up to your team, you hold E, go to modify ordering groups, go to add creature to group, and for this example I'm just going to put it on team group 1, right? So if I set my team group 1 by pressing numpad 1, you'll see all the teams, this is team group none, this is team group 1. In tame group 1, only the Microraptor is highlighted. You'll see by the little green arrow on his head, it means that he's the only tame highlighted. So, if I whistle him now, under tame group 1, only this Microraptor will move. You'll notice none of the other tames are going to move. None of the, the mana is not going to move. Even if I come you know, right close, none of them are going to move. Only this guy is going to move. So this is very, very important to understand because this is really, really important if you are, you know, in PvP and you need to whistle a tame. For example, you need to whistle a Giga to go and attack somebody, or you need to whistle a shoulder pet to do something. In general, you don't want your tames all running into one place. You don't want to whistle your tribe mates' tames into into a fight, and you don't want to whistle, you know, tames that you don't you want to whistle a specific tame to go into the fight. You want only that tame to be whistled. This really helps solve a lot of problems in PvP where a team accidentally gets set on neutral because you did a group whistle, or a team gets set on aggressive or passive, and you're like, how the hell did this change? I didn't change anything. Yeah, that won't happen anymore if you do stuff like this. I go up to these Microraptors and I set them both to team group 1. You'll notice if I whistle them with Tame Group 1, right, set of Tame Group 1, they'll both move together. And that's that's pretty awesome because you can have a group of Tames set to follow a specific thing. So if I, I can even set this guy on Tame Group 1 and he'll move with them as well because he's on the same Tame Group. But I don't want, I don't want that, so we're gonna, gonna get rid of that.
to move them aside. And you might ask, well, that's that's a little bit annoying. I have to, if I have a team, I gotta set every single one on a group if I don't want it to do something. And yeah, but there is a solution to that. There's actually a different way to do the same sort of thing. So if I remove the team from every group, like this, all right? So it's set on no groups, no groups, just team group none, which is every team. And I want to set them both onto team group one. How do I do that? I go, I hold E on it, I go to modify ordering groups, and then I add class to group. Classes are essentially the, it's associated to the team that you set it to. So if I set a class to team group one, every single team of that type is going to be set to team group one. So every single Microraptor I ever tame from now on, on this character is going to be set to tame group one it is character specific and it's permanent you can change it obviously you can get rid of it but it stays like that you don't have to set it ever again so even if i switch to a new server it's still going to be on tame class one so you'll see tame class one now they're both set onto tame group one the class is is one and they're both set each tame that you can actually see if i open up my inventory and go to tame groups you can see group one classes in group Microraptor, which is pretty cool because you can see that all Microraptors are set to Tame Group 1. I can remove it here, and that's really awesome. It's pretty cool that you can do all that stuff, and a lot of people don't don't utilize it, and it's it's crazy that people don't know all about this. So I can you can see a passive whistle, which will only affect these two guys. These guys will still be on attack target, right? Well, this was already on passive before, but these are two are going to be on passive and it's really really helpful to know how to do that you'll also notice that if i set this guy to team group two and i set this to team group two i can whistle them both together and the other microraptor won't get whistled see only both of these these ones are going to go to that point this one's going to stay but if i go to team group one which is associated to the class directly related to the class one, I can move them both without moving the Ichthyornis. So you can really get control over which tames you want to move. Or in any tribe in general, this is really important. You need to whistle your PT to move. And you have, I don't know, a base or uh, just any, like, a, I don't know, pen filled with dinos. And you want to whistle your PT to go somewhere but you don't want to whistle all of your teams. And if you do that, that'll be very, very annoying. And also that'll piss off a lot of your tribe mates because all of their teams are going to go everywhere. You got to use team groups properly. And what's nice about the team classes is that if you go into, let's say somebody else's, I don't know, maybe maybe you join someone's tribe right away and you're defending a cave and they got, they got Gigas in there and you need to whistle a Giga for some reason. I don't know, you, you got to whistle a Giga and you don't have that giga set on a team group how are you going to whistle only that giga but if you set it on a team class prior all you have to do is go on to that same team class and that giga even though you had never seen this giga before never interacted with this giga ever if you'd set a giga onto a team class previously you'll be able to whistle it so you can see how useful this is and why you should just understand it. It's really not complicated, and you should really get into the habit of setting certain dinos onto specific groups so that you can have more control over what's going on. For some of you, it might not make a big difference in your playstyle, but it's really just a good form to sort of be playing in where like you're only whistling teams that you want to whistle and you have a lot more control over your gameplay. You know, no weirds, you're gonna have less weird shit happening. Things are gonna tend to to behave and act the way that they're supposed to. There are some subtle differences between attack target and neutral. You'll notice if I punch this Carbonemus, the only the attack target Microraptor will go after it. If this Carbo were to attack me, you'll see what happens, watch. So if they're both, on, one's on attack target, one's in neutral, going to put this on neutral actually that's not a good example but on aggressive we're going to unclaim it 
what I want you to see. As soon as this Microraptor gets hit, you're going to watch. This Microraptor is going to come to defend it. That's how neutral works. So neutral is essentially, it won't attack until it's attacked or until something else is attacked. So if you get attacked, it's going to come after you to defend you. If another one of your tames gets attacked, it's going to come to defend you. But it's a pretty important distinction because you might not want your tame to start going after people. The first thing we're going to go over is how we actually tame a Microraptor, because they have a very unique taming process and can be kind of a pain in the ass. Since they're supposed to be, you can tame them on the server you go to, you don't actually have to carry it with you all the time. You can, you'll often find yourself taming a lot of these, especially after one dies, you can just go and tame one immediately. My favorite strategy for going to tame these is just sniping them with a the bola. They're very, very, very fast, so you are going to need to bola this thing to knock it out. You walk up a bit close like this, chuck the bola. Once he's bolded, you can typically, if you're a melee character, you can really easily club them out. If you have a quality combo, you can probably melee it with the, you know, the like melee swing. Like, let me show. Uh, combo. If you have like a, a cap combo, you can probably do this and uh, tame it like that, but um, it, it'll fuck the Dura, but you can still tame it like that. You can alternatively kill shit in the area and pick up some Trank Arrows, put it in your crossbow, which you should have for grapples, and shoot like one or two at it to knock it out. Overall, they're very, very easy to knock out. Not, that's not a problem at all, and if you really have an issue knocking it out, just go for a really low level. It shouldn't be that hard to find. You'll typically find them in the redwood regions you can find them in the desert regions on maps that have desert you can find them in a lot of places honestly they spawn in pretty much every region like even the snow they spawn in the jungle they spawn everywhere you'll have to sort of understand exactly the regions in which they spawn uh, a bunch of maps on ragnar they're very easy to find they pretty much spawn everywhere except for like the highlands and yeah so once you knock once you knocked it out this is how you tame it. And a lot of people, for some reason, don't even know this, but all you need to tame this thing is one rare flower. So I'm just going to put one rare flower in its inventory. It's going to eat it, and it'll tame instantly. And then like, well, that's only a level four. Even a level 150 will be tamed by a single rare flower on one X. One times rates, it'll tame with one rare flower. No narcotics needed. So that's really cool. It's super, super easy to tame them. It takes pretty much no effort at all. And it is quite useful for how little it, it costs to get and how easy they are to tame. Now let's go over the controls for the Microraptor. So to throw him, all you have to do is double tap F very quickly. That's global. All, right, you know, all, all the shoulder pads do the same thing. But for the Microraptor, it's very important to understand this. So that's how you throw them from the floor. When you pick them up and you go on your tame, you're like, well, I'm double tapping F. It's not throwing him anymore. How do you throw him when you're on a tame? If you're on a tame and you want to throw your Microraptor, you press R. That's how you throw him when you're on a tame. I don't know how you can do this on PS4 or Xbox. It might not even be possible. But on PC, you press R to chuck him and it's, it's that simple. Just R, throw them, super easy. Those are pretty much the main controls for it. That's, that's all you really need to know. There's two main ways I use to make my Microraptor target somebody. The first one is keep him on attack target. So if I keep him on attack my target, I'll I pick him up and let's say I want him to attack... Uh, there should be something over here. Really? Okay. Say I want him to attack this Anki. All I have to do is deal a little bit of damage to it and throw him, and he'll instantly go after them. It's that simple. No whistling needed. So that's very easy to do. Okay, see how he targets the Dodicarus instantly because I damaged it? That's super, super easy. 
The next way you could do it is to keep it on, to just whistle it and throw it like this, and it goes after it. So that's pretty simple. The important thing to note about Microraptors is that they will only target a tame that is high enough for them to reach. So for example, a, micro, a uh, mana is typically not one of them, but there are situations in which it can stun a mana. So I'll show you. If I'm underneath the Microraptor, now he will come and he'll target me, as you can see. Now I gave him the elevation to reach me, which is why if I'm mounted on top of a uh, mana, I can whistle my Microraptor to go and get him. So you can see he's flying around now. He stunned me and now he's calmed down. Alright, so I can aggro him on me again. If I jump back on... Oh, I should... Uh... So you can see he's aggroed on me, but he's not going to stun me. He'll never be able to stun me under any circumstance like this from the floor. He just cannot reach me. I'm too high up. But if I go again, get elevation for him, he'll be, start to fly. As you can see, he sort of activated his fly right there, and he'll fling me off. That's how that works. There are some tames that the Microraptor can stun off of by default. So regardless of his height, he will stun me off like a Parasaur, right? If I aggro him, he should be able to jump up to me. There we go, right? Stuns me right off. That's sort of not proper because, you know, he was like literally underneath me. Realistically, you'd be throwing it from some sort of kind of elevation, but the Microraptor works purely off of how high it is off the ground. Now here's another example, another tame, which it will stun off by default. It's the trike. So it's on passive, so it doesn't interfere. So if I hit this Microraptor, it'll come after me and boom, he's flying and he stuns me right off. And, it's, and, and you can see how he didn't stun me at all off of the mana. He didn't do it. But you see he's flying here? Now he stuns me. Once he's in fly mode, he will he will stun anything. Because he'll fly straight up to it. The Minecraft is a very finicky tame to get to work. But once you understand him, he's very powerful. Alright. Here's a, another PvP use a very nice use so an owl is a very common tame to be used in pvp and the microraptor happens to be able to stun an owl without any without any elevation so if you see if i hit him he will get i should jump typically there you go they typically jump right away if you throw it like once you when you throw the microraptor you're giving it elevation so just keep that in mind. This is all off of a Microraptor from the ground, which is not normal. Obviously, you're not going to have it following you and then whistle it. It's going to be something like this. So we can see we can aggro it. And once we jump on our owl, it'll start to chase us. And this is very important. You see, it can stun us off midair. That's an important uh, difference to make. So you can whistle your Microraptor onto somebody who you know is about to mount onto a tame like a flyer. And once it aggroes onto them, it'll basically lock on. So you'll see, we're going to do this again. I'm going to hit him. I'm going to run all the way to this owl. I'm going to jump on. I'm flying away. And... Where'd he go? Okay, he literally vanished into... Oh, he, he de-aggroed, I think. But here you go. There he is. He's coming now. So he, he's coming after us. This is... Obviously, this is not as powerful as a whistle, right? If I had whistled him, he would... Um, he would go after us without, you know, losing aggro like that. But the stun is very, very powerful. Now, the Microraptor is already one of the fastest creatures in the game, and when you give it extra speed, even a small amount like this, you'll see it actually can seriously impact its ability to target. So if I hit it, and I get on this owl right here, he's gonna have difficulty stunning us. As you can see before, he was able to stun us right off the ground. But he's not tracking us anymore. Like, we can run away and get back on our owl, and he's not going to follow us. 
in the air like he was doing before. Which is what he's supposed to do. Given you might you might be able to get him to volley you better if it was on a real player and you actually threw the Microraptor, but nor before he followed us just fine, and this time he's not coming after us. That's because he's too fast. When he's too fast, it messes up a lot of shit. An owl is supposed to be stunnable by default, like just off of the ground. Microraptors will target them. So that's why you don't put speed. The things that we're going to level on our Microraptor, there's only really two stats I'd ever put on Microraptor. And that's health or weight. And it's it's either or. Like, everybody, well, most people should know that putting weight onto a shoulder pet can be helpful as it can kind of work as like a backpack sort of thing. It reduces everything by half, I think. Or some, it reduces it by a certain amount. So you can use it like that. But the, the, mo the main thing you want on it is health because occasionally it'll graze like a mana beam and if it's really, really low health, it won't survive. But a higher level one with a lot of health, like 2k health, could live like one or two ticks through that mana beam and still be able to stun the rider, which is really important. I'm just going to be showing some of the Microraptor clips here. So these are old clips from previous videos. First one is a clip of a Microraptor with too much speed, so you can see what happens times it circles him before it actually decides to hit him it takes too long and i'm also i also apologize for these clips being really low quality because i got these off of uh i had to go and re-download my old videos since i don't have enough space for that on my computer so you're just gonna have to deal with like really low quality but i mean you can still see the micro after so that's the whole point This is an old clip to show that the Microraptor doesn't only synergize with the mana, it's pretty good with the Owl too, especially with the slow. You can see that Microraptor plus Owl is really good at killing flyers because you can kind of freeze them out of the air and once they hit the ground you'll see, as soon as this guy gets frozen down, the Microraptor actually targets it right away. You can see I actually end up getting frozen in this fight because I played it poorly and the Microraptor ends up flying off my shoulder and stunning this dude off his mana which would have saved my life because he actually had a friend who came shortly after. The Microraptor is excellent at targeting people on owls, it's excellent at targeting people on manas if you're on a mana, or it's pretty good at targeting people on bloodstalkers, if, even if you're on foot it's really good for getting rid of bloodstalkers, if you get picked you can actually throw the Microraptor and it'll stun the guy off. If you find a wyvern who's landed and you freeze him, you probably won't be able to kill him in one burst, but you can Microraptor him off right away. Oh, sad. 